This is part 18 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the use of temp data in ASP.NET Core with an example. At the moment, we are on the employees list page. Let's click edit and navigate to the edit Razor page. When we click this update notification preferences button, at the moment, the confirmation message is displayed on the same edit Razor page. Now, what we want to do is when we click this button, we want to redirect the request to the details Razor page and then display this confirmation message over there on the details Razor page. One way to achieve this is by passing this confirmation message as a query string parameter from this edit Razor page to the details Razor page. First, let's do some cleanup. At the moment, I am on the edit Razor page and this is the code block that displays this confirmation message. We don't need this code block anymore, so let's delete this first. Next, let's look at the changes required in the corresponding edit page model class. Within this page model class, we have the message property right here and this property is populated within this method on post update notification preferences. Now what we want to do is after this property is populated, we want to redirect the user to the details Razor page. So for that, let's use return redirect to page and the page that we want to redirect to is details. To this details Razor page, we want to pass two things, this incoming employee ID and this confirmation message. For that, let's use an anonymous object and let's pass the incoming ID and the confirmation message. Finally, to fix the compilation error that we have, let's change the return type of this method from void to iActionResult and then run our project. At the moment, we are on the edit Razor page. Notice now, when we click this button, we are redirected to the details Razor page. And then notice the interesting thing here, employee ID is passed in the URL as a route parameter, whereas the confirmation message is passed as a query string parameter. Why is that? Well, that's because if we take a look at the details Razor page, notice we have a route parameter for employee ID. That's why naturally it is passed as a route parameter value in the URL, whereas we don't have a route parameter for message. So it is passed as a query string parameter by default. Now, all that is left is to read this query string parameter value and display it on this details Razor page. Next, in the details page model class, let's include a public property of type string and let's name this property message. Now, we want model binding in ASP.NET Core to automatically map this query string parameter message value to this public property message. And for that to happen, let's decorate this property with bind property attribute. And we want model binding to happen even on a get request. So let's also set supports get property to true. Finally, all that is left to do is display the value that we have in this message property. And here is the code required for that. We're first checking if this message property on the model is not null or empty. And if it is, we are displaying the value using a bootstrap alert. So let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. We are on the employees list page. Let's click edit on one of the employees. And when I click this button now, notice we see the confirmation message as expected. One interesting thing to note here is all the characters of the confirmation message, including the first character are in lowercase. Why is that? Well, that's because if you recollect from our previous videos in this series, notice in the startup class within configure services method, we have set lowercase query strings property of the route options object to true. That's the reason we see the query string parameter value in lowercase. But if we take a look at edit.cshtml, notice we have set the first character of the message to uppercase. Now, if you want this message to appear as you have set it here, then set this property value to false. At the moment, we're using a query string parameter to pass the confirmation message from the edit Razor page to the details Razor page. But query string parameter is not a right choice for a workflow like this. Why is that? Well, that's because if a user bookmarks this URL and if he comes back to it at a later date directly, he will still see the confirmation message. And the user is like, hang on a minute, I did not change any notification settings. Why am I seeing this message? He's really confused. We are leaving the user in a confused state. We can very easily fix this by using temp data. 
Just like how we can use a query string to pass data from one razor page to another, we can also achieve the same thing by using temp data. So let's pass the value that we have in this public property message to the details razor page from this edit razor page by using temp data. So let's store the message value in a key that is named message. And since we are using temp data to pass the confirmation message, we no longer have to pass it in the URL as a query string parameter. So let's delete this. Next, on the details razor page, let's display the confirmation message that we have in temp data. So first, let's check if temp data of message not equal to null. If it's not equal to null, let's retrieve the value from temp data and display it using this bootstrap alert. With all these changes in place, let's take a look at the browser. Notice, now when we click Update Notification Preferences button, we see the confirmation message as expected. The important point to keep in mind is we are not passing this confirmation message as a query string parameter from Edit to Details Razor page. So this means even if end users bookmark this URL and comes back to it directly at a later point in time, they don't see the confirmation message. As the name implies, temp data is temporary. It's only available for a given request. Once data is read from temp data, it's deleted and no longer available for subsequent requests. For this reason, if we refresh this page or bookmark and visit this URL at a later date, we don't see the notification confirmation again. This is exactly the behavior we want and temp data is perfect for a workflow like this. At the moment, to retrieve the confirmation message from temp data, we are using the string key message. If you're like me and don't like to work with strings, we have another option. We can create a public property with the same name as the key and then decorate it with temp data attribute. This attribute is going to automatically retrieve the value for that key from the temp data dictionary and populate this public property. Since this is a public property, we have access to it in the display template. So in the display template, we can reference the message property using the model object. Let's quickly look at this in action. In the details page model class, we already have the message property. Notice the name of this property is the same as the key that we have used to store the confirmation message in the temp data dictionary. Now to have the value of this key read out automatically and populate this message public property, let's decorate it with temp data attribute. Finally, in the display template, let's access this message property through the model object. Notice, even now, our application is working the same way as before. As the name implies, temp data is temporary. After the data is read from temp data, it's marked for deletion and no longer available for subsequent requests. Is it possible to retain temp data? Yes, it is. If we use temp data, peak method. This method will not mark temp data for deletion. So it will be available for subsequent requests. There's another option as well to retain temp data. Use temp data keep method. As the name implies, this method keeps the temp data even after it is read. In this example, only the key message and its value are retained. All the other keys and the values will be deleted once they are read. There is another overload of this keep method that does not take any parameters. Notice in this case, we are calling the keep method without passing any specific key name. So in this case, the entire temp data dictionary, that is all the keys and the values are retained. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.